Hello everyone. Welcome to the Geoecologist. So today we are running the session 8 and in this session we are going to discuss about one of the most important sought after technical aspect of the research that is the sampling. So today we are going to discuss the sampling techniques especially in geographical studies and other social science studies how and why it is important and how the sample should be collected. What are the methods of collection and what are the advantages and disadvantages of sampling techniques so please pay attention on the sampling techniques and let's go further but before that please subscribe to our channel the geoecologist and please press the bell icon for the updates now sampling is a process of selecting samples from a group of population so or it's a group or a population in which we select sample from so what happens that it can be the measure of prediction of the outcome that we are looking forward to so what happens we sample because we need a smaller group or a population on which we can predict or estimate the outcome of the entire population so sampling becomes important for the process of research it is process of selecting samples from a group or population that we call universe so remember universe is the total it's the completeness of the population from which we select the samples all right so in this image if you see the entire population and only the sample from the population that we select so the entire population is universe and the part that we select for our study for estimation for prediction for analysis that part is called sample all right now let's go further and look a sample is the sub unit of the population involved in research work the population is defined by the researcher himself so researcher has to define the population and also the limits of statistical generalization with it all right so often in geographical research one may not actually want to observe each and every unit in a population so what happens sampling becomes most important aspect of geographical inquiry because a geographer or a social scientist need not necessarily go to every person in the entire sample in the entire population so sample becomes one of the most handy tool for any geographical inquiry all right so for example let's look at certain terminologies associated with the sampling process so let's look at that a group of elderly people or senior citizens and disabled people in the vicinity of a smart home community okay so suppose there is a situation where we have elderly people or senior citizens or disabled people in a community so this can be called a sample because from the population we are selecting only those who are senior citizens or disabled or elderly okay so that is a sample and then what happens it is referred to a uh, n the capital n or the small n when we talk about the numbers so that is the sample size that we define all right so next is the way we select senior citizens or the sample of disabled people that is called the design of the sample or sample design or strategy in what ways we select the sample that is the sample design or strategy then each citizen or disabled people that we take out is the important point where selection of our sample is happening so that is called sampling unit or sampling element so each unit or each element is important when we take a sample all right the list of identifying each respondent in the study of population that is called sampling frame so sampling frame is another terminology what is it it's a list that identifies each respondent okay in the study of population and finally the obtained results based on the basis of information from the sample respondents is called sample statistics all right so what did we learn sample sample size sampling design sampling unit sampling frame and sampling statistics so this is the basic idea taking an example and clearly looking at what a sample means and what are the important terminologies associated with the sample so now the advantages of sampling can be that it saves cost 
and human resources during research work all right and what else its disadvantage can be a researcher may not find the information about the population being studied specifically to its characteristic and can only estimate or predict them so on the basis of sample the exactness may not be available of the population that we are looking forward to as a researcher so these are the advantages and disadvantage this means that there is a high possibility of error occurrence okay remember this that using a sample method an error occurrence has a high probability because it it is not linked to the entire population it is just holding on to a particular sample size of population all right that is much important now so it should always be kept in mind that sampling process only enables a researcher to make estimation okay about the actual situation so remember an estimation about the actual situation may not be the real truth it may be close or away from the real truth so what are we doing using sampling we are trying to estimate but the estimation may be or may not be close to the real truth that's why while selecting a sample we should be very careful because there is a possibility of error and hence a detailed field work along with the secondary data sample is important to complement the research all right so if we have a sample taken from a secondary data we must complement that using the field work and then we can arrive to a better conclusion a better estimation close to the real truth of the ground all right so remember whenever we are taking a sample be careful regarding the advantages and disadvantages of the method that we are using so that we are going to study in the types of sample today so let's go further so types of sampling all right so let's go ahead and see what are the major types of sampling the first is probability sampling and the second is non probability sampling as the name suggests one is based on the probability of estimation so how probable is the result that we are looking forward to and the other is non probability so it's not based on the chances of occurrence okay so there are two major segments of types of sampling now one by one we are going to look at each so first the probability sampling all right so first in probability sampling is the random sampling the word is random so randomly a sample is selected it means each person in the universe has an equal probability of being chosen as a sample so if we are choosing randomly means probability is equal for the entire population or the entire universe from which we select the sample all right so simple random sampling can be called also as sampling without any replacement that is the important point to remember then we have systematic sampling so per earlier it was a random sampling then we have systematic sampling the word itself is systematic in a systematic manner for example kth element so every kth element that we are selecting in the sample frame all right so it is more practical involving less work and many a times it is complex method so the greater opportunity for error is also there all right so remember while systematic sampling okay then what we have is the stratified random sampling earlier it was just simple random now it is stratified random it means what happens it is obtained by separating the population elements into overlapping groups called strata so we divide the population into various strata and then select a simple random sampling from each of the strata all right so this type of sampling is commonly used very common stratified random sampling is the most commonly used in geographical research why because we have layers of factors multitude of factors so what we have what happens we divide the entire universe entire population into those multitude of factors and then we select the sample from each stratum all right that's why stratified random sampling is widely used in geographical research then what we have is cluster sampling all right so as the term suggests it's a simple random sample okay but it is a unit based on cluster of elements for example a researcher who wishes to study students might first sample a group or a cluster of students such as classes or canteen and then final sample of students can be selected from these clusters all right so it saves time and money but 
it can be erroneous as well all right so remember cluster sampling can also have errors in that all right then non probability sampling so what are the non probability sampling the first one we understand the characteristics this type of sampling does not claim that a sample is representative probability sample claims that it is representative of the population of the universe but non probability sample doesn't claim it doesn't say that it is the representative of the entire population all right so non probability sampling is less complicated and less expensive as well so that we need to remember but it can be done you know taking advantage of whosoever is available as a sample so the study can be done on the basis of whosoever is available now let's look at the types so what is under non probability sample the first is convenience sampling the first word itself is convenience so try and understand it's about convenience so the researcher is the person who decides to talk to people about it who are very close so respondents is based on the convenience of the researcher all right next is the quota sampling it's very much similar in order to look at it so it's very similar to stratified sample so what happens quota is being decided for example 60% of democrats and 40% of republicans as a sample all right so this is something like a quota given to a particular group of population and then on the basis of that selecting a sample then it's dimensional sampling very much interesting it is multi dimensional form of quota sampling in which one has to specify the variables very much important and this is very much important in also geographical research because there are numerous variables so of interest of population and then to make sure that every combination of these dimensions are represented at least once for example soil and slope soil and vegetation so similar kind of you know relations are there and then multi dimensional form of quota sampling can be done using that all right so this method is designed for studies in which only a small sample is required so in case of small samples dimensional sampling can be used then purposive sampling so purposive is very much to the purpose so who defines the purpose who is the judge here the researcher so the researcher uses his judgment to define his purpose for the study using this particular sample and then snowballing now it's very much important it has gained lots of importance in uh, particular kinds of studies so researchers conducting observational research or community based study use snowballing that is snowball sampling all right so it is conducted in stages so first stage we select few people who are found through interviews or through people who identify as the key informants all right and then from those key informants the second stage is involved using those people and interview with them again and from then the third stage so what happens first we find one person then he tells us about the three more persons of the same nature then from this three more person on the second stage we talk to nine more people or 10 more people using them so what is happening it is very similar to like a snowball like a big snowball that is being made at the base if a small snowball is rolled from the hill top and gradually it picks up a snow on the move down the slope and gradually becomes a big snowball so first you get one person in first stage then three person in second stage then 15 person maybe all right so largely the snowball gathers up so this is also sometimes referred as chain referral sampling that is another terminology for that and this kind of sampling is importantly used in community studies and very specific studies for example drug addicts refugees war widows so such kind of sample if you want then snowballing is very much helpful all right now let's look at one another important point that is sample size how do we select sample size and what does it mean so sample size may be chosen based on different parameters in several different ways so what are those parameters first based on experience it means the choice of sample size through sometimes our own experience is important for example we can assess the intervals or risks of errors in hypothesis testing then using a target variance for an estimate okay so target variance for an estimate can be derived from the sample obtained if a high precision is required then narrow the confidence interval that is how it is done and the third and the last one is the confidence level basis 
so if a large if it is a larger sample that is required at larger confidence level then larger will be the sample size so that is a direct correlation between sample size and confidence level so if at a larger confidence level larger is the sample size that's how sample size is selected so we can summarize the entire sampling methods into two distinct categories probability samples and non probability samples under which we have several further categories systematic stratified cluster simple random all right so as a probability samples where probability of being selected is there right and it is claiming to be representative of the entire population or the universe but same time non probability sample is based on the researcher's judgment it's based on the convenience it's based on the specific type of sample or context of the study so judgment and quota sampling all right so this is the largely entire family of samples that a researcher utilizes for his research all right so today we completed the sampling techniques sampling methods its various types its advantages and disadvantages so please like and subscribe to our channel the geoecologist and please press the bell icon for the updates stay tuned stay safe thank you so much